Breast cancer rates continue to climb in the U.S., especially in younger women. Now, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but this morning we're going to think beyond pink and focus on the P word, which really matters, and that is prevention. I'm going to be talking right now with the founding director of the National Breast Cancer Prevention Project. She is also the author of the book, Busting Breast Cancer. Susan, thank you so much for being here with me today. Oh, Jenna, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Susan, why did you decide to get so involved in this issue? It's a good question. I, I guess I've had so many friends who have been touched by breast cancer, a few family members, and I then had a wonderfully very close friend die of breast cancer, and I got really mad. And I said, it's time to figure out what's causing this disease. We must know. There's so much money that's been going into this issue over the years. Um, why are so many women continuing to get it? And why are so many women continuing to die from it? And, uh, and so I decided to take my research skills. I have a PhD in women's studies and graduate degrees in economics and politics. So I thought, let me take these skills of researching and look at the existing research and translate the research into simple steps that you and I, younger women, older women, can take so that we never get breast cancer or we never get it ever or ever again. And Susan, you're all about the prevention. Yes. So you've, you've taken your research and now you've, you've found steps that we can start doing today. That's right. Younger women. What are some of those steps that, that we need to do? Okay. Well, my, first I should do a plug for my forthcoming book. Hopefully it will be out in January. It will be a small paperback. Um, it's called Busting Breast Cancer, Seven Simple Steps to Protect Our Daughters and Ourselves from This Unnecessary Disease. Because the whole idea of the book is that, in fact, 60, 70, 80 percent of breast cancer today doesn't have to happen. That if we as women know just these seven steps, there are many more, but just seven. And I should also say that not one thing will ever give a woman breast cancer. Each woman develops a personalized toxic cocktail. And some of the ingredients in that cocktail we have no idea are happening to us. Um, and so it's not as if um, we can prevent all of the toxins from happening to us, but we can certainly prevent a lot of them. So one of the major ones, probably the easiest, Jenna, is for every woman to know what her vitamin D3 blood level is. And D3 is uh, actually a hormone that we make from the sun, um, but we can also, if we don't get a lot of sun up north, et cetera, we can also take supplements to get it. And a blood test is not that expensive. Normally people will have, can ask for a vitamin D3 blood test when they have their annual physical. And the research just in the last two or three years is telling us if our, our blood level is at 50 to 80 or 50 to 90, it's nanograms per milliliter. It's a little amount in our blood, but if it's at 50 or above, we are quite protected from ever developing breast tumors, prostate tumors for men, as well as colon tumors. But in this case, we want to avoid breast cancer. We want to have a 50 to 80 or 50 to 90 um, blood level. Well, that's definitely simple enough. That's it is. something we can start, start right now. And, and I know another one of your main steps, Susan, that we can start doing right now is getting off birth control. That's something you, you've written a lot about. Yes, yes. In fact, I have uh, an e-book if people are interested in learning more than they ever might have wanted to know about the connections between birth control drugs, and these are progestin-based drugs, and breast cancer. You can go to uh, Amazon.com right now or at Barnes & Noble, and for $3.99 you can get for your Kindle, your Nook, um, your iPad, uh, you can read, it's called Busting Breast Cancer, Birth Control Drugs. And you can read all of the research and, um, and what exactly is happening. But apparently there is an ingredient in birth control drugs, in a few of the fertility drugs, and in the hormone replacement drug that women, many women used to take, fewer women now take it, the Prempro and um, um, there's another one, I'm forgetting it right now, but, but all of those drugs have a specific chemical hormone called progestin in it, not progesterone, that's what our bodies make, that's what we can get from plants safely, but progestin. 
And that is the culprit, it turns out, that increases a woman's ability to create breast tumors and to accelerate the growth of them. So it's really difficult for American women right now to switch off of birth control drugs, which, which I really understand. But many of us who are older used to have, we had what they called an IUD, an intrauterine device, and they had one called, um, right now, the only one on the market is called um, Paragard. It, it's, it has a little bit of copper in it, but it has no hormones in it. And if you're you know, wanting to have children or more children, you can safely have a Paragard inserted, and you can keep it there for as much as 10 years safely. And then in the midst, when you're ready to have a child, you can have the physician um, take it out. Um, but there's no hormones. It's much more effective, in fact, than birth control drugs because you don't have to forget to take them mm -hmm. or you don't have to forget to refill your prescription. So, um, so that's what we're recommending. Mm -hmm. um, and for women who are finished having their babies or who are choosing to be child free, and there are many women that way right now who've made that, that choice, which is good for them, um, you can have a tubal ligation or you can ask your husband to have a vasectomy. Mm -hmm. But there are many options. And in fact, US women are only 4.5% of the world's childbearing population. And US women use 47% of all of the birth control drugs made in the whole world. Mm -hmm. So American women have been uh, pushed by all of the commercials. They have been pushed into using hormonal birth control drugs much more rapidly and much more, quote, successfully than women in Europe, than women in Asia, Africa, Latin America. Um, and we need to get rid of our addiction to birth control drugs. We need to try other things that are safe and effective. And the hormone-free IUD, only the Paragard, not the Marina, that has that progestin in it. There is an IUD called a Marina, and you don't want that. You want the Paragard, and you also want to have a tubal ligation if you're finished having children. You know, I have to say that I've never, I had never heard that until hearing it from you yeah. that an effect of birth control can can be breast cancer. That's right. That's right. And you will talk to, you know, if if you talk to a lot of women who have developed breast cancer, and we're talking not that you've ever taken breast cancer. We're talking while, you, while you're using the contraceptive drugs is when your risk goes up. Once you stop using the contraceptive drugs, your risk becomes the same as someone who's never been on them. Well, not quite the same, but almost the same. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue is if you're on them now to look into the Paragard or to look into tubal ligation as an option, and find a way to get yourself off. The other thing about birth control drugs is it stops your body's ability to make your own progesterone. And progesterone helps, helps keep you thinner. Progesterone helps increase your immune system. Progesterone helps you not become depressed. Progesterone is a wonderful hormone that our body makes um, that when we're on birth control drugs, many women will tell you, I can't take them, they make me crazy, or mm -hmm. I can't take them, they put on too much weight. They have a massive effect on the body, and it's that the fact that you're not making your own progesterone if you're on the birth control drugs. Great. Now, Susan, unfortunately, we're running out of time this morning. You can find out all the tips, though, as to what you can do right now to help prevent breast cancer in Susan's latest book, which is entitled Busting Breast Cancer. Susan, one more tip, though, this morning. I know you also focus a lot on diet in the book, too. Yes, yes. One of the most important things is your water. We have so much chlorine in our public water supply. It's really important to put a filter on your shower. It's really important to put a filter under your sink or if you have a small place to have an on-counter uh, filter. The best is one that you, is a carbon filter or a reverse osmosis that's going to pull out the chlorine and all of the other organic materials because what you're drinking when you're drinking chlorinated water are false chemical estrogens. Um, and, and our bodies are 60% water. Mm -hmm. So we really want to keep our bodies very alkaline, and that means, and very low es you know, chemical hormones. So that really means filtering your water and being really serious about doing that. I found if you go on eBay, you can get the cheapest 
uh, underwater um, filt un under the sink filters mm -hmm. um, as well as the shower filters and of course our bodies absorb water skin is the biggest organ we have and it absorbs mm -hmm. so you want to find ways not to be absorbing all that chlorine great susan thank you so much for sharing this information with us this morning i look forward to talking with you again in the future thanks mm -hmm. i'm going to take a quick break right now i'll be right back after these messages more to come stay with me